Um, so, guys, wow, this is amazing. I grew up in Dallas, and so for me, this is a really, really special honor to be here with you today. So what I am talking about with you today are epiphanies, aha moments, because I have been studying epiphanies. I wrote a book, and I um, have a website all about the same question. What is your greatest epiphany in life? There we go. What is your greatest epiphany in life? And you guys might be thinking, and a lot of people ask me this, what uh, exactly are you talking about when you talk about having an epiphany? Now, an epiphany by definition in the dictionary is a moment of great or sudden revelation, an illuminating discovery, realization, or disclosure. Now, because I am asking people about their greatest epiphanies, the ones that have had the biggest impact on their lives, I usually define an epiphany as a moment of great or sudden revelation that usually changes your life in some way. And I'm sure that we've all heard this term before, aha moment. So we're talking about the biggest aha moments of our lives, these moments of clarity and realization, discoveries about life that sort of set your life in a new direction. And what I want to talk to you guys today about is the biggest aha moments or greatest epiphanies that I've had about epiphanies. So I want to talk to you first about um, Diane Warren. Diane Warren is one of the most prolific, successful songwriters that we have around today. She's written songs for Cher and Aerosmith and Aretha Franklin and Whitney Houston, all the way to Justin Bieber and Beyonce and Britney Spears and Akon and Sean Kingston and tons and tons of different people, tons of hits, tons of songs. She's on the radio. You've probably heard a million of her songs. And Diane had her first epiphany when she was only seven. She said she was uh, listening to an album with her sister, and she was looking at the album cover, and she saw in the liner notes names in these parentheses, and she thought to herself, my name's going to be there one day. And she was only seven, and she started asking her dad for an instrument, for a guitar, so she could start writing songs. He finally gave her an instrument when he, um, she was 11. So she said she got that instrument in her hand, and she said, this is my life. And she started writing songs. And she loved it and made her heart sing. And she kept doing it and kept doing it. And when she was 14, she said she had this epiphany that she realized just how much discipline and hard work it was going to take for her name to be in those, in those uh, parentheses. So she started becoming obsessed. And she wrote songs all the time and would practice. And people kind of thought she was weird. And she didn really have many friends. But she didn't care because she loved this so much. She even made her dad go to, to publishing houses and, and bring her songs to them. And she said she got rejected over and over and over again. But she kept going because she loved this so much. And she knew if she kept working at it and kept developing this, that one day she would be successful. And she was and she is. Diane defines her epiphany as believe in your passion, believe in your power, believe in being stubborn. I want to tell you a story about a guy named Cory Booker. Cory Booker was in seventh grade. He was running for class president. And um, do you guys ever have to ha run for class president when they do that? Do they have to give speeches in front of the whole school? Do you know what I'm talking about? So he had to get in front of the whole school and give his speech. And he'd rehearse it and everything. But he choked. He couldn't get the words out. He was shaking. He was sweating. It was horrible. The whole school was like laughing at him and embarrassed for him. He went home humiliated. That whole night, he couldn't sleep. He did not want to go back to school the next day. But he had an epiphany. And he said, you know what? I am never going to let that happen to me again. I am going to face this fear of mine, and I am going to get over it. I'm going to be able to talk in front of people without choking. And he did. He got in front of his class whenever he could. He would get in front of his basketball team, church, wherever he could. He would stand up in front of people and speak. And every time he did it, the fear would become less and less, and he would get braver and braver. And you know what? Not only that happened, he started liking it. He started liking it, and he started realizing that he was really kind of good at it. So he kept doing it, and he kept doing it, because it was making him happy, and he was good at it. And it led him to an amazing career in politics. Cory Booker is now the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. He has been written up in numerous publications, O Magazine, Time Magazine, New York Magazine. They've done a documentary about him. He's been on Conan O'Brien. He's been covered all over the world, and he speaks all over the world now, and he loves it. And this is how he defines his epiphany that he had. Sometimes that dark moment you're in is, in the end, actually a gift. So that most humiliating moment in his life that is still one of the most humiliating moments in his life, and he's in his 40s now, 
has in the end become a gift for him because he had to conquer that fear and it led him to this career that he loves and he's extremely successful at. What I want to share with you guys today is that I heard stories like Diane and Corey's over and over and over again. So many people had their epiphanies at your age. You could be having your greatest epiphanies in life right now. Now, you may not know it. Um, none of us know it when we had our epiphanies. We had to look back on our life and go, oh, that was an epiphany. But you can be listening. You can be listening to what makes your heart sing to what makes you happy and what you're good at. And you can keep working at it and following that. Those things that make you happy, that make your heart sing, and that you find that you're pretty good at, those are your gifts and talents calling to you. And it's very important that we follow these gifts and talents because the world needs them. I love this quote by Albert Einstein. Everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish by, on its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life believing it is stupid. Okay, this to me means I have, you know, we all come in with our gifts and talents. I have learned through my project after interviewing hundreds of people that this is absolutely true. Everyone is a genius. Everyone in this room is a genius because we all come in with our own gifts and talents that we're here to bring to the world. And it's our job to listen, to listen to what makes us happy, to listen to what makes our hearts sing and what we're good at so that those gifts and talents can then be shared with the world. That is what I wanted to share with you guys today that I wish someone would have told me when I was your age. Because when I was your age, I was too scared and too embarrassed to follow what really made me happy, which was to act. And I didn't start following that until I was 25. But when I did, it, start, it led me into a life of writing and filmmaking. And now I'm standing up here talking to you at TED. And this is so cool. So I just want to tell you my greatest epiphany about this. Believe in your revelations. Believe in what makes your heart sing. Believe in yourself. Take action on them, guys, and watch this world conspire to support you because I promise you it will. Thanks so much, have a great day, have fun.